and architecture. I'm Haig Safarian. In this show, we'll look at a unique solution to the age-old homeowner's dilemma, namely parking. We'll see why Jim Mosher has removed a circular asphalt driveway and replaced it with an occasional parking spot that also doubles as the entrance to the home. And I'm William Anderson. On this episode, we're going to visit a small but pretty garden. In order to create the illusion of space, we're going to introduce a mirror to this garden. We'll be visiting an artisan who works in sheet metal to learn the ins and outs of design, pattern, and weatherproofing when using materials that reflect your garden's beauty. And I'm Mariel Bradley. It seems that we tend to collect lots of little things in our lives. Well, this time we're going to make a bits box. It's perfect for the potting shed, storage shelf, or anywhere we tend to accumulate those little bits and pieces. The owners of this suburban corner lot are justifiably proud of the architectural look of their home. So when they asked Jim Mosher of Landscape Plus to redesign their front yard and create an occasional parking area, there were a number of factors for Jim to consider. Jim, tell us a little bit about the background of this particular property. There are some subtleties about it that we should be aware of. Yeah, hey, it's located on a corner and consequently we used to have an asphalt driveway that started here and then came out on the other side. And, mm -hmm. and while everyone loves a circular driveway, uh, in this case what we had was a lot of pedestrian traffic uh, late at night. 90% of the pedestrians, no problem, but the 10% that dropped garbage that maybe right. vandalize a car or whatnot. You know, so we wanted to eliminate that. Also the aesthetic issue of, mm -hmm. of the front of the house is quite attractive and the idea that you go to all this lengths to do this and then you park a vehicle in the direct sight line of it seemed a little true. dysfunctional so so we tried to provide some occasional parking uh, what about the actual grades here was this the finished grade up on top yeah the, the lawn as it is right now came out the door of the landing there you can see it was one step down and right. we, we maintained this it was uh, it was it was different than it was now uh, slightly but basically we wanted to sink the car down the driveway as it existed previously came up and over mm -hmm. so we wanted to actually have it flush so we just carved this bit of space out mm -hmm. and did the dry stone walling to retain the area and then that left us with uh, this surface to deal with so um, and you've continued the wall right around the corner as well to take a material and use it across the property so that the, the, there's a sense of continuity a sense of balance mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be duplicated in the same scale but just a touch over there to, to pull it all together well, let's discuss some of the materials you've used here why these choices well, the backyard already is landscape that existed uh, prior to my arrival here. So mm -hmm. I, the stone in the backyard is a, a mix of Pennsylvania and New York rectangular flagstone. So right. for the sake of continuity, of course, we okay. want to pull that material and use it out in the front as well. Mm -hmm. For the walling material, we found some old reclaimed Credit Valley wall so that the, the, when the wall went up, the, uh, the attitude or the, the approach was to, to have it look like it's always been there. Right, right. And then... Um, uh, the wired and steps come down through and, and they they don't look dissimilar from the wall in terms of their profile and whatnot and and beautiful you know, large monolithic pieces yeah, sort of nice pieces we wanted to do something that was very low-key that was uh, was sort of pseudo countryish sort of and uh, not too finished didn't look too fussy mm -hmm. and um, so this is where we ended up Jim beautiful work on the ground plane here because the stones you've actually set down into the ground putting the horizons in the opposite direction that you'd normally see it actually matches what you've done on the wall well the idea was try to to mimic the surface as sort of an inlay and um, and mix the materials uh, to give some sort of depth of color it was an experiment and it worked out I believe and then well we've got the drive here that butts up against the sidewalk and you've done something interesting with the boulevard what we have is we started to get to materials that work well together mm -hmm. into play here and doing the inlay and whatnot inside the New York borders and Pennsylvania borders. Okay, mm -hmm. and that works fine. But then we encountered the sidewalk, and then the question became, well, what do we do on the other side of the sidewalk? And right. the idea of how to create a transition between asphalt, turf, mm -hmm. concrete, and then flag, it was a bit of a schmozzle. Sure. So we decided to go low-key, to take some of the big chunks that we've used here and just mm -hmm. stick them into the the lawn and then to sod it through so we could maintain the, 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 the green that came down with the boulevard and wrapped around into the lawn. And it's not for day-to-day -day use. I mean, you're not going to drive cars up and down this and expect sure. it to live a long time. Well, Jim, we've got that wall that continues right around the property. How did you deal with the rest of the landscaping for the front of this house? Well, again, because the client uh, really liked the profile of the house, it yes. so why. Uh, we didn't want to have any material up high, sort of in, in front of it. So we concentrated on functionally trying to link this area with that area. Mm -hmm. 
and then pr providing an alternate sitting area off to the side. Clients have, uh, have uh, children uh, in their early teens and increasingly their private space seems to get pushed and pushed, so they decided they'd like one out front, perhaps, where the kid probably wouldn't come. So right. we we used the same materials and put a little garden area around it, and it, it seemed to work really well. Even the two uh, Adirondack chairs that you have there really blend in with the whole theme that's, yeah. that's been created it's quite here. quite comfortable looking. Comfortable place to sit, actually. <laughs> and finally, Jim, these stairs that you've got off the ceremonial front entrance, mm -hmm. pick up on the same material here, but you've done something different. The question was whether to actually have a physical pedestrian link yes. that goes down to the, the roadway over there. And uh, we wrestled with this one uh, quite a bit, and to the point where we actually had steps laid out going all the way down to the roadway. Uh -huh. And then it, it seemed to be a little too obvious, you know? I, for a, with what's basically again a visual and no one's really walking this way short of the postman right. um we decided to go with a couple steps with the grass in between and just give the a visual link to the roadway but that's it it has a beautiful look to it actually it just appears great. as though the steps are just jutting out yeah. from the land with the grass landings very nicely nice. done quite Thank subtle you. yeah jim you've done a beautiful project here that's very unique and it gives us some food for thought next time we're thinking about car parks thanks thank so much for the tour today thank you Join us after the break. We found the perfect location to position a garden mirror. We'll be visiting the studio of Caroline Castre, a sheet metal artisan, to discover some of the possibilities and the techniques used when fabricating an outdoor mirror. So stay tuned. Brought to you by Garden.com. Now you don't need a green thumb, just an index finger. of you who actually have a life outside of gardening, there's Garden.com. With tons of plants, expert advice, and home delivery, we can help anyone have a great garden. Now you don't need a green thumb, just an index finger. HGTV is celebrating Earth Week with great specials. The Living Garden takes you inside some backyard havens where the wildlife comes to stay. It's beautiful, it's absolutely nice beautiful. Day. Plus, we'll show you how to create your own living garden with a few eye-catching elements. When you put in a water garden, especially one as natural as this, there's no end to the surprises that you'll find in your garden. Don't miss The Living Garden. Sunday at 5 Eastern on HGTV. In this makeover, we're working in a very well-designed garden. It's a small, intimate space, and as a finishing touch, we're going to add a mirror to the back wall. This reflective focal point will give the illusion that there's more space in the garden. And to find an unusual mirror, one that will fit in with the garden's design, we're going to visit the storefront studio of artisan Caroline Castre. Caroline, we've got a garden and we've decided we need a mirror in the garden. And we've jumped to the conclusion that probably one of the best materials uh, for the mirror frame would be metal. So I can see we've got a number of different objects here. A lot of them are, are frames. And maybe you can just tell us what some of the different materials are that you use and what you would recommend for materials outside. Well, I'd recommend um, aluminum for outside as opposed to tin because the tin will rust and eventually disappear quite quickly. Tin is a crisper metal to work with. The okay. design is crisper. But um, I still would recommend aluminum over the tin because of the rusting factor. If we decide we are going with an aluminum frame, are we then restricted to having sort of that silvery color um, on everything? Not necessarily. We can fill it with a wax finish, which um, Oh, I see. It has some color put into the wax, and yeah. then you rub it in, and then wherever you've done any indentation, that color sticks. The design ends up being flatter than when it's shiny and reflective. Now, I notice this fish down here that's bright, brilliant red. Well, it can also be spray-painted. Okay. And you can get... A, this is a water-based spray paint, and it has, oh. has a lovely sort of plastic finish on it. Mm -hmm. And it will protect metal. So there really aren't any restrictions from a, from a color uh, point of view. Okay, no. that's good. Caroline, where does, where does some of your inspiration come from? You must get to a point where you just don't know where to start. I actually have an example right here of um, using the grammar of ornament, and I have um, taken uh, African design and framed it on an African painting. 
Metal actually translates really well into different designs because it has depth to it. With the aluminum, you can get some depth to it by scoring the front and the back. Oh, okay. So it creates different levels. Okay, so how do you actually get your designs to stand out on the metal? How do you work the metal, Carol Ann? Well, I use all these tools which I bought in Mexico, and they're made from different part rebar. So that's just like reinforcing bar that's normally used in, in um, construction with concrete. Okay, and then each one at the end has a different pattern. Yes. Okay, these are great. You need a different tool for every mark you make. And so you take these and hammer them into the metal, yeah. and it leaves a mark. Mm -hmm. Or you flip it over and hammer it the other way, and then yeah. it projects a yeah. mark. Now I can see on one of the frames you have here, you've got um, writing across the bottom of it. Yeah, that's the, the nice part. Um, I have these really great letters, and they're all oh. handmade, and they're quite old. I got them at an auction. And a mirror doesn't have to be um, a square mirror. It can have an outline, as in fish. I see, okay. Then the mirror would be behind that. The mirror is behind it, and it's all sealed and glued. When you say sealed and glued, how would we go about weatherproofing a ah, mirror? Well, outdoor mirrors really need to be caulked with a silicone a sealant. Clear, like a clear silicone? Yeah. Okay. And then on the inside, normally I fill the mirrors with um, cardboard, but for outdoor mirrors, I fill them with um, a corrugated plastic. Okay, and that's like the backing behind the, yeah. behind the mirror. Okay. And then at the very back, I would put another sheet of aluminum on it and okay. rivet it, sealed, and caulk it as well so it would be completely waterproof. Caroline, now for, for our application, we have this garden. We found uh, what we think is a great location to put a mirror. And I think actually for, for the outside application, this mirror will be seen from some distance. A lot of these are, are wonderful. From this distance, we see all the design and, and the effort and work that's gone into them and, and in the intricate pattern. But this one up here, I think is great in that it's, it's quite simple. You've got sort of just nice streamlined sort of horizontal and perpendicular lines, and then just the sort of uh, corner detail. In this garden, there's quite a bit of lattice, so the, um, the crisscross detailing on the corner would probably fit right in in, uh, that in its own way. That would work really well with an architectural yeah. feeling garden. Okay, good. Because we, what we can do is check the measurements and get back to you, but I think we're probably looking at about you know, that wide by probably from the ground up to about this height so that okay. when someone approaches it, they see themselves, but then there could also be a reflection that's long and tall um, of, uh, of the rest of the garden. So that that's nice. sort of that's roughly nice what we're looking mirror. for. Yeah. So we're going to let you then sort of have free reign with those restrictions and come up with a design for us. Okay. And then once you're finished, we'll uh, get it up to the garden and uh, hang it in place. Great. custom-made aluminum mirror in place, we can instantly see that the mirror's reflection gives us the feeling of depth in this intimate space. The contemporary look reflects some of the classical elements in the garden, and Caroline's checkerboard design picks up on the lattice of the fence and the shadows that the fence leaves on the ground. It's a perfect match. Coming up after the break, we're going to be making a small storage chest for all those bits and pieces in your potting shed. We'll be stenciling designs and painting on all of the six drawers, so get out your paintbrush. Hi, we're the Screensavers from ZDTV. Yeah, we're coming to Livingston Saturday, April 17th from 12 to 1 p.m. So come on down, say hello, ask your computer questions. And register to win cool prizes like a 3Com Big Picture Net Cam. All right, that's Saturday, April 17th at the Gateway Country Store, 437 West Mount Pleasant Avenue in Livingston. Watch the Screensavers on ZDTV, weeknights at 9 p.m. on Comcast Cable Channel 64 in Union, Channel 58 in Plainfield, and Channel 32 in Meadowlands. High school is never easy. History has taught us many things. For example, one night I was thrown by a horse and I had to have a laminectomy. But when you're a 46-year-old recovering ex-con, it's never been harder. The point is, I was a raving maniac and my prognosis was no. Really, Jerry, that's fine. What was your report on again? Brazil. Strangers with Candy, Comedy Central's way after school special. Series premieres Wednesdays in April. You've got it because you've got Comcast. Thank you. 
I'm Steve Kirby. These are my mountains. I test emissions for Ford Motor Company. We're up here in the Rockies testing Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury sport utility vehicles. We're really concerned about the environment. Every SUV we sell this year is going to be low emissions. These vehicles average 35% less smog forming emissions than the government requires. 35%. That's really amazing. The government doesn't make us do this. We're doing this for my mountains. Better ideas driven by you. for your free book and find out why more people are building with Trex Easy Care Decking. Trex, the deck of a lifetime. It's another beautiful day. I'm walking on sunshine. One of those days you never want to lose to seasonal allergies. And don't it feel good? Talk to your doctor about Claritin. Just one Claritin tablet daily brings you 24 hours of non-drowsy relief from seasonal allergy symptoms. Claritin has a low occurrence of side effects, such as headache, drowsiness, fatigue, and dry mouth. Don't lose a single day. Take clear control. Take Claritin. Every morning I have a different routine. I go see different clients. I drive roughly 75 miles a day. And when I suggested to my wife, Alexis, she said, what, are you crazy? I said, honey, listen, we need a dependable car for Luigi. The warranty has made me very confident. I've had a whole history of terrible cars. I would park it down the street because I was embarrassed. Look at this guy. For me to drive a Lexus is such a pleasure. Now I pull right up to the valet. This car gives me an edge. Owning the Lexus is closer than you think. Only at your Lexus dealer. In this do-it-yourself project, we'll be decorating a six-drawer bits box. This storage chest is perfect for any place you've got leftover bits and pieces. It's fun and easy to make, so let's get to work. The first step of this project is to buy your small storage chest. And I've purchased one with six drawers. It's very plain. And we're going to jazz up the drawer fronts. And I'm going to use this side of the drawer, not the one with a little notch, because I'm also going to make a decorative knob. Now, we're going to be doing a stenciling technique. We're not doing the plain old stenciling. We're going to jazz it up a little bit. We're going to be adding paint to a plaster filler, and we'll then be uh, creating a raised textured surface. So the first step is to add the paint, and it does need to be a really strong color, because when you add it to the filler, it really dilutes down. Just need to get it to a nice working consistency you don't want it to be too runny. There's no hard and fast rule in terms of the amount of paint and the amount of filler. What you need to do is get it to a nice working consistency and that's a fairly stiff paste. And that's about the right consistency. The stencil I've chosen has a geometric design and you can get these from any craft store. And we're simply going to place it onto the drawer pick up a scoop of our paint and filler mix and scrape it on and this really is the fun bit once we've done that you simply lift it off and you can scrape off any undesirables and leave it to dry I've chosen a pearlized paint to top coat the stencil. It's now dry and it's very simple. You're just going to put a fairly substantial layer. If you're not happy with one coat, then just add a second once the first is dry. But I'm going to just do one coat and then you're also going to leave that to dry. The paint on our drawer fronts is now dry and what I'm going to do is start sanding off the top layer and what this will do is reveal the color below and give us a nice texture. So you can see it's starting to come off. And you can do as much or as little as you want. I'm happy with the look of my drawer front. I'm going to do this to all six drawers and then we're ready to make the drawer knobs. And to do that, I've purchased regular 
draw knobs. And then what I've done is cut out a shape and just nailed it to the top. And this will create the framework for our papier mache. And this is simply paper and glue, and it's layered over the knob. When that's done, what I've done is give it three coats of the pearlized paint, and I've done six, and they're ready to screw onto the fronts of the drawers. I finished the knobs and I've attached them to the drawer fronts. I'm just attaching the last one and now I have somewhere to store all those bits and pieces. The maintenance of architectural elements in your garden also includes the living ones, like this hedge. To get some hints on trimming a hedge, I met with John Edwards of Edwardian Gardens. John, when someone has finished landscaping their property, it's not as easy as just walking away from it and hoping that it's going to look beautiful from that point on. A certain amount of maintenance is required. Tell us a little bit about why we prune. Well, we prune to help rejuvenate the shrub to keep it new looking and fresh. Also dense from the bottom up to provide a good windbreak or barrier. And uh, the aesthetics of it are a lot nicer if it is full from top to bottom. What are the different types of pruning? Uh, there's basically only two kinds, heading and thinning. And when you head, you're removing the apical dominance of the tips of each and every branch. And uh, the first things I would do is sh literally shear all the heads off of the long, slender stems with my head shears. By shearing the tips off of the hedge, you're getting rid of a chemical condition known as apical dominance which makes the plant head for the sunlight by eliminating that we're promoting lateral growth which will bush the shrub up quite substantially by next year this hedge will look 100 percent different and the second one was the thin. second one is thinning and with thinning you're actually removing full stems by doing so you're rejuvenating the plant encouraging new growth from the bottom up Plus, you're able to redirect the plant's growth, so you're able to obtain the shape and direction of growth that you're after. Up here's a little heavy, enough to, well, that's too much, but that's fine. And up in here, too heavy, we gotta let the light in. Sorry, get rid of that. Get rid of the center of that. Get some sunlight and air. We have a plant that's trying to mimic part of the hedge. It's camouflaged itself in there nicely, but I think I'll be taking that right out. And while we're in there, we'll eliminate any dead. The obvious dead is what's gonna end up causing this hedge a lot of grief. It's perfect housing for pests. Dead and dying wood is a little more tasty to hedge pests. Any particular time of year that's best for pruning? Uh, spring and fall generally, as a rule of thumb. Any type of plant that you should not prune? Well, ideally, it'd be nice to let all plants reach their um, optimum growth, mm -hmm. and then you get a true look at the shape of them and how they would look. But uh, most of them do benefit in some way from a good pruning. So it's safe to say that everything needs a little snip now and again. Yeah. And I usually do this about three times. Stand back, have a look, cut it again. Stand back, have a look, cut it again. Just like a haircut, you gotta make it look good or nobody's gonna say you look good. There's more garden architecture to come, so stay tuned. HGTV's Before and After is on the job site with another amazing remodeling project. This week, it was once a tiny lakefront cabin in a maze of mismatched buildings. See how the home's new owners plan to bring the house together into one extraordinary vacation home. Before and After, Sunday night at 8 on HGTV. of you who actually have a life outside of gardening, there's Garden.com. With tons of plans, expert advice, and home delivery, we can help anyone have a great garden. Now you don't need a green thumb. 
just an index finger. Preen and Green does a great job preventing weeds in my garden. But it's the fertilizer in Preen and Green that makes my flowers so beautiful. It helps me take care of the garden, so Bob can spend all of his time on the lawn. Discover the joys of weed-free gardening with Preen and Green. <laughs> for your free book and find out why more people are building with Trex Easy Care Decking. Trex, the deck of a lifetime. How many tools do you need to put together our hose reel? None. It cranks right up. The Real Easy Hose Reel from Ames Lawn and Garden Tools. Every day, more people are choosing Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. And here's why. No one else sells more lawn and garden supplies. Virtually any type plant you need, Lowe's has it. A jungle's worth of trees and shrubs. All back for a full year. Plus, every day, low prices guaranteed. Ask a nursery specialist. A Lowe's nursery specialist. We really know our stuff. After all, you can't spell flowers without Lowe's. When it comes to home improvement, Lowe's knows. Every second, every minute, every hour. Your plants are nourished continuously when you use Osmocote plant food. Osmocote has extended time-release granules, so just one application, once a season, is all it takes. Osmocote plant food. All your plants need, all season long. We've proven on many occasions that the architecture of the home plays a major role in the final design of the landscape. The land and the home must be married together to create a successful finished look. The low positioning of the front windows and the client's need to accentuate the facade of the house force the designer to construct a low-lying landscape. For this same reason, the designer removed the driveway and created a parking area on a lower level to hide the view of the car. If you pay close attention to the land and the architecture surrounding you, you'll find that the landscape solutions are already there. Well, that's all for this show. So for William, Mariel, and all of us at Garden Architecture, thanks for watching. I'm Haig Safarian. Join us again next time.